we're dealing with in Jeremiah is a rem the remnant. It's the last. I mean, if anybody, this are the, these are people like us. These are the people who are left that have a knowledge, that know which is God's truth, that have, uh, that have, have stayed with the Lord, and, and then what happens? It's the falling away. Most people think it's like the evangelicals that are fall. No, they've already gone. They were, they were Israel. They were the ones that left. They went a long time ago, and uh, they, they're just going further and further into a mess. And now uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the remnant that's going. Last week we saw, um, we saw a wake-up call last week uh, for our people. You, got, you better get ready for this. And then before that he was giving, uh, he gave a visual, uh, a visual lesson. A, uh, uh, it was a girdle. It was a, uh, a mud on the girdle. Uh, uh, what did they call it? They called it the uh, marred linen girdle where uh, linen is something that's not absorbent. Uh, that's what the priest wore. It, nothing sticks to it. It just slides down, and he's saying it's marred. It's, 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 not, it's no purity to it anymore. Uh, that's what's happened today. What's happened today is, is people's, uh, what people have is their walk with God has become marred. It, it's become cruel. Uh, you know it yourself today. Uh, people say, well, I'll pray for you. Uh, and then you never hear from again. You have to realize something. Not many people are praying for each other today. I wouldn't do that. You know, I mean, think about this. I, this is what I, if, if, if well, how we're conducting the church, if how um, uh, the church is conducting itself, do you realize the church is a failure? After 2,000 years, this experiment's all failure. How did we get to? We're, we're going down the tube. It hasn't improved anything. It's gone and it had a few bumps in the road. Anybody ever hear of what we call the Elliott Wave Theory? The Elliott Wave Theory is they use it for stocks, just so you know. I happen to just play with them a while. But when there's stocks and a stock comes out that's usually uh, been worked with, it has, a, it has a way it goes. It goes up first, and then it comes down, okay? And then it goes up again for a second shot, and then it comes down, but it never comes down to where it first rose. And then, man, it shoots up, and it's an ex accelerates, and then guess what happens? Crash. It crashes down, and it has a few bumps on the way down. They call that the Elliott Wave Theory. Uh, that's kind of what happened with, with the church. At first, it went flying high, and then the Dark Ages came, and then, you know, uh, the Philadelphia Age came. And, uh, and, you know, and now what's happening? It's crashing down. It's going down. And uh, there's a, there, there were a few bumps in the road uh, that brought it back up a few years ago with Billy Graham and, and other people that got involved and everything. But you have to realize something. When you're forsaking God's word, don't expect there. Amen. Don't expect, when you're forsaking God's word, don't expect God to work on it. He's not going to work on fake stuff. He's only going to work on his word. He's only going to work on uh, something that's pure. Okay? Something that is pure. Amen. All right. So uh, I'm going to just give it a few minutes for Larry to come in, and then I'll start on Chapter 15. Just is there any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, no, I just I'm, I just sit here thinking, and did, did, did the number of Christians uh, doing what I'm doing now increase? I think they did increase during the uh, Philadelphia age, incredibly, of course, because they had an open door, um, and then after Philadelphia age, it's not that they, you know, it's like the population. I think it's more or less would be the percentages, if that's, anything. That's what that's, you know? what I, that's what I was wondering. Did the percentage? Yeah, I don't. Were Christians increased or did it stay the same? It and probably went up, but it didn't go up with the pers with the ratio. Right. Okay, but you have to realize something, and and, and uh, I mean, uh, each one of us can pick up on this. Okay, if you look, if you take if you take the truth out of the out of the church, okay, and uh, brother Larry, he's he's went around a lot of places in in recent times, and he'll he'll probably tell you there's no doctrine, 
there's no salvation calls. Right. There is uh, the guy up there. He has no idea what he's talking about today. Uh, you sit there with the book, and you've got to be going like this. What in the world is this guy talk speaking about? This doesn't say this at all. Even in the longest church running churches. Yes. Like yeah. 20 years yeah. or more. And, and preaching out of the wrong Bible for 20 years. And what it brings is confusion. So what you have is a confused church. Now, if, now think about this. There's a guy out there. He's correct in the book. Every time you turn around, he's like, well, you know, it says this. and reg Now, you're a person sitting there. Why would you read that book if it's always been corrected? Well, and you think to yourself, well, he knows what he's talking about. He, he pretty much can figure it out. And they take their book. They put it on the shelf or they put it there, and that's it. They don't know it anymore. And they go, well, he knows. And then what happens if it doesn't become important to them? It stops being important to their children. The next generation comes up again, and guess what? They don't care whatsoever, and now look what you got. You know, uh, Presbyterians, they've been gone for years. Even to the point where, think about this, the Presbyterian church today actually believes that the Jews should leave Israel and Pal it should be called Palestine. That's our... Now, ask yourself this. What would be the reason if there's no Jews in Israel for Jesus to come back into it? Amen? And then you have, uh, you have the uh, other church. They don't even know what a millennium is. It's right there in the book, and they don't even understand it. And they think that you meant we're in the millennium or it's over already, and that the world's just going to blow up, and they're okay. Keep bringing your money here. You know, why do you think they give those envelopes with numbers on them? So they can account for that stuff and get know, know if you're paying. And when you're not paying, guess what? They tell you. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. They do. <laughs> it's just a money driven. Look, you know what really happened? It became a business. Right. It became a business plan. Go to, your, go to any of these colleges that, that call themselves colleges that are actually have King James Bibles in them and stuff. And you'll see, I, I, had a, I have a friend, he, he said to me, he said, when he went to college, I was telling Bob, he went to college, to Bible college, this guy's older than I am. You know, they told him, don't read your Bible. You'll get enough time to read it when you get out of here. Why did I go to Bible college? You know, another thing they did was, um, like, ha have people be in the church that shouldn't be without being corrected about their behavior. That can right? work. Yeah, that, that is too. Because... They didn't want the numbers to go down. Yeah. Right? They wanted to keep sure. those people sure. so they could keep the money. Yeah, I, had a, I, I will tell you, one time I had a, a whole big group come in. Uh, they were, there was a closed church. They came in. They sat in the back when we had pews, and they filled them. I mean, there was, this was a large family with cousins and everything, and uh, uh, they wouldn't stay because uh, they wanted me to preach the way they wanted me to. I was like, I, was like, I don't need you that much. I don't need some. I, look, I'd rather have five people. I, hey, look, I, I, I'll tell you straight out. I preached to one woman for five years. Five years. There was actually only two, but one was there all the time. I didn't really have anybody else. I, I had, uh, I had, they, but those two would come in. I'll tell you what. I preached to them like I'm preaching to 1,200 people. I used to have little Bible studies on Thursdays, and I used to have them on Thursday mornings. And I used to, uh, I used to have the, the two women, and then, uh, then I only had one. And I still preached to her every, every Thursday, uh, you know. And it was the Book of Psalms, and we went through every psalm, all, all those psalms, one person, one person. Amen. And and you know what? God blessed that. God blessed that. He blessed us. He blessed the faithfulness. Look what she is now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know. Uh, she got her. She got her dream. Her dream was to read, to learn the Bible. She never learned it. She told me uh, my dream is to learn the Bible. I sat her down and I taught her the Bible for eight years. And I got to tell you something. I think it was pretty good. This <laughs> is pretty okay. All right. I don't think I'm a good teacher, but I can guarantee. I, I guarantee she did better with her Bible than she did her whole life. And she let me know. Not to mention that woman led 200 or 300 people probably to Christ. In her time, within she uh, in eight years she really did a, a masterful job. Amen. To what I thought. Okay, so uh, here we are in fifteen, and and we're going to see something in the very beginning that uh, is that just 
opens you up. Now you have to realize there's Jeremiah preaching here in Judah, uh, but there's also somebody else preaching at exactly the same time, but he's in Babylon and his name is Ezekiel. Ezekiel and Jeremiah are basically preaching at the same exact time. One's in Babylon. He got taken out in the second siege. And, uh, of course, Jeremiah waits until the end. And then uh, then Jer something will happen with Jeremiah. We'll get into that today. Uh, but the Bible says in chapter uh, 15, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Hard statement, huh? And it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to to tear and, and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? And who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. And I will fan them with a, a, with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people, since they return not from their ways. Their widows are increased to me above the sand of the seas. I have brought, brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly, and terrors upon the city. She that hath borne seven languisheth. She hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before, the, before their enemies, saith the Lord. Father, thank you, Lord God, for uh, this reading, Lord Father. Thank you for the message to come, Lord God. And though we shake sometimes at these messages, Lord God, where judgment comes, we know we have the great... Uh, we got the great salvation plan to, to actually rescue us, Lord Father, and the glorification of, of, uh, of, of, of the times, Lord God, that, that we will see when we get taken from this earth, Lord Father, uh, in due time. And we thank you, Lord God, for that great promise, Lord Father. Uh, i got to tell you, Lord, I'm, I'm glad I'm not going to see this stuff that's coming. And I thank you, Lord. Ask you to bless this time, Lord Father, and, and use it to teach thy people. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, really what you get in Jeremiah, and we look at it like, wow, this is going to happen. It's going to be hard. I, I'm a little bit like, whoa. But i got to tell you something. It should be a comfort a little bit. The comfort is you're not going to be here. Okay? The comfort is you've got a loving God that won't let you see this stuff. Amen. I mean, just like others, you may see a little bit of it. I mean, we're starting to see uh, people being persecuted for, uh, for actually mentioning the Lord's name up in Canada. They just had an incident. Uh, Larry was telling me this morning, I saw it, uh, where a boy uh, mentioned the name of the Lord and uh, said that there are only two genders. Next thing you know, I mean, he's mentioning science and he's going to jail. Uh, the truth uh, in the world will not set you free. Uh, the truth in God's world will set you free, or make you free, uh, as it says. Not set you free. And make you in free. School. Amen. Yeah, well, they're, they're just lumping them all and Christum them and weeding them out and yeah. going by the side. Uh, and uh, what we're seeing here, look at that first verse. 
And just before we work in that first verse, uh, it says it, it's looking at it. God's judgment is going to be uh, certain down to uh, down to verse number four. God is God's judgment is uh, certain here. Uh, go over to First Peter chapter four. already there and uh, we have to understand something about judgment we look at all these things in Daniel we look at all these things in Revelation and we know judgment is coming and we see it coming upon uh, these, uh, uh, these this, this kingdom of Israel that's coming but you have to understand the world we're, we're, we're looking at the world and saying judgment's on them and judgment's on them but that's what God's turned around he says right now before you get out of here you better understand something judgment goes upon where first the house of God look at Verse 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the what? House of God. House of God is being judged right now. Just before we are, are out of here. Why? Well, you don't see it around you. Churches going down. You don't see it around you. Men of God going away. Uh, you don't see all these churches out here that don't have any pastors. I mean, come on. Today we got women. Women that are, are up there. And I got to tell you the truth. I don't blame that woman that's up there. I blame the men that are sitting there listening to her. They should be ashamed of themselves. That's what, I mean, could never, I mean, people always said to me, well, you think there'll ever be a woman in here? I don't know. Let's ask the women. No. <laughs> we had a woman stand up some years ago, started preaching, and I will tell you, the fangs went out. Oh, yeah. And told her to get out of here. They were freaked. It was like, ah! I was just standing here going, well, I ain't going to, I, I can't even stop this. Why? Well, after all them years, you've got to understand something out of years and years of that Bible being put to you and put to you and put to you, and all of a sudden God puts that one, those one, those certain things that are just there like steel. What's that? A woman's not to be a pastor. No. You know, uh, one of these days I'll actually sit down and show you, I can show people why it can't be. Uh, you have to understand something. Uh, the first woman, who did she hearken unto? Yeah. Satan. Satan. She had hearkened unto Satan. The men hearkened, man hearkened unto the wife, under the under the voice of his wife, but the woman actually hearkened unto Satan. And God said that, okay, she's gonna have to be servant to she's gonna have to be subject to her husband to keep her from him. And guess what? The uh, the the man, he hearkened to his wife, so guess what he has to do? He has to take care of his wife for all these times. Amen. Uh, remember in chapter 5 of Genesis, you know what it says? It says he made them both male and female, and he called their name, their name, their name, Adam. Yeah. One name. That's why you have your father's name until you're married, and then you get your husband's name. And what's everybody starting to do? They got all these dashes in there. Yeah. Well, I got to have my name in there. And all you did was make, them make more syllables. It's the only thing they did. Nobody knows who this one is, that one is. They just want credit all the time. Be a little humble. Amen. But what he's saying here, look, he says, he says, though, uh, then saith the Lord unto me, though Moses and, and Samuel uh, stood before me, I, they, couldn't, they couldn't change my mind. They couldn't change my mind towards these people, though they were. And a guy who's preaching at the same time brings it up. Go over to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14 and look down and we're starting verse number 12 where it says the word of the Lord came again uh, to me saying son of man when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously then will I stretch out mine hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it now watch, that's, that's what he says. He gives his decree and he says, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord. What's he saying? He says, maybe I'd pull them out like I did with Job. Maybe I'll pull them out like I'm going to do with you. Maybe I'll pull them out like I did with Noah, but everybody else, they ain't saving everybody. 
They ain't saving everybody. Did anybody ever figure out why Abraham never went past, he never went further than uh, down to five? He always he stopped at ten? People don't even realize why he stopped at ten. Well, uh, he's not, Abra, uh, excuse me, <laughs> he's, uh, he's, not, he's not slacking with, uh, with, with Abraham in that he knew Noah. Abraham knew what? That God didn't even stop the flooding of the whole world for, for five. He said, what? Eight. Eight for the whole world. There comes a point where God's got to say this. It ain't going any further. It ain't going. You've seen it. How many people have seen it in another person's life? They just keep going and going and going. And then finally God says, I'm cutting them off. I've had enough. You want to keep doing this and you want to keep doing this. You know, uh, here we are in a society today, and uh, and everybody's stricken. I'm sorry, I don't want to. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but let's face it, we got a lot of cancer going around, and cancer spreads. And you got to realize something: it ain't being pulled away, it's not being cured. And you better realize something: it's here to stay, and it's because of one thing: it's because of sin. He says, even these guys, I wouldn't. If they could save them, they could save themselves through that, you know. I praying their way out, but nobody else. And God says it twice to him. He also said it in verse twenty from fourteen. Uh, but here he is, and he says, Moses and Samuel. Nobody wants you to understand. These are guys who are the heroes. When when Christ shows up, everybody says they're a disciple of who? Moses. Oh, we work for Moses. We we just like Moses. And, and he and he's he's a, oh yeah okay. Uh, you don't. If you would have worked for Moses, you would have known who I was. He told them, "Why you would have listened to Moses, you would have known who I am. If you had listened to Abraham, you would have known who I am." Look, I know you have heroes, but let me tell you something: they can't save everybody. They're not. I'm not going to hear them over this judgment. He's talking at. Look at verse number two, and he says, "And it shall come to pass." If they say unto thee, Whither uh, shall we go forth, uh, and shall tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are, what's going to happen? Death to death, and, and, and sword to the sword, famine to the famine, and, and captivity uh, to, the cap, to, the, to the captivity. Uh, what's God's, look, World War III is on the horizon, people, and you're not stopping it. It's right in chapter 24 of Matthew. It says what? There will be wars. And he says, once the fig tree's there, this is going to be a different thing. We went through two world wars, but the fig tree wasn't there. Now Israel's there. This next one, everybody's involved. It's going to be a it's going to be worldwide where it's not just Germany. It's not just Japan and a few countries. It's going to be going everywhere. Did you hear what Saudi Arabia and Iran are now together? They've been for a long time. Now they're, they're yeah. combined. Don't worry, it's going to happen. Oh, we heard that uh, we're here in Mexico going this way. Look, I'm going to tell you, this is the way it's going to go. It's going to happen. I'll show you. Go to uh, Matthew 24. Okay. Very good. Matthew 24. This is the beginning of the, Matthew 24 is the beginning of tribulation. Okay, you're not going to be here. You're here for the very beginning. Okay, and guess what? The very beginning starts off, and he says, look at verse number 6. He says, uh, and ye shall hear of wars. We've been talking about that for years, but it's not like today. Right. You'll be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Now, we know there were wars Okay. Uh, guess what? Years ago, you didn't have to. You didn't have to guess about it. We already knew Germany was in a war. We already knew they were in a war with uh, with with Great Britain. We already knew Japan was already in China. We didn't have a problem. Today, we're getting. Hey, I got to tell you something. I walk around and ask people, "Do you know we're on the verge of World War III? They're, oh, 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 what's going on? They don't tell you anything on TV. We've just spent, we're sending hundreds of billions of dollars, which is insane, mm -hmm. to, to some country that doesn't even really have a very big army, and they're, just, they're already gone, and we just keep sending them money saying that they're going to win. 
We're going to take Putin out. You know, the guy's sick. And there he is at an MMA, MMA competition. This is, and, and then the, our country said, oh, well, that's a lie. He's not really there, you know. Well, there's a, there's, there's a date there. This is how goofy it's gotten. And, you know, people believe this stuff. People believe anything. You just you just keep going and going and contriving and contriving, and they'll believe it. Hey, look, this was happening back with Nehemiah. They brought it up when he was building that wall. And guess what? It's still happening today, and it's even worse. The reason why is because people are dummies today. <clears throat> I have never seen the most stupidest people. I mean, this is the look. The best we got is a guy dressed with putting a dress on, and that's our military. Oh, these are the guys we're going to put out. Yeah, why don't we put them next to Putin? Hey, be afraid. We got a guy that wears a dress. He's really afraid. That guy's really hard to get. Oh, we ain't going to get that guy. And there's Putin. And you know what he says last week? He says the United States is just a bunch of perverts. Well, you know what? He's right. He's right. He's right. But Matthew 24, he said, but look what he says at the end of verse 6. You're going to hear these things, but what's that? But the end has not come yet. And then what? For there, for nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And we're starting to see that, and that's the first part of the tribulation. You know what's happening? Then he says that's the beginning of sorrows. That's the first half of the tribulation right there. It's going to be worldwide. Worldwide. Now look look over in 24 and uh, towards the towards the uh, last part of that he says look at verse 32. Now he says now now learn the parable of the fig tree. The fig tree is Israel and Israel became a country in May 14, 1948. We haven't had a we haven't had a world war since then. And this world war takes place after the parable of the fig tree. The fig tree's coming back, and once they'll have their religion back together, and man, it's gonna, it's really gonna be something. I'm glad I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> Are we gonna be here for the rumors? We already we're here. Not, yeah, we're here for the rumors. Yeah. But you said that's the first part of the tribulation. No, no, no. The, the, the start of the tribulation is gonna start out with World War Three. Oh, okay. We're here, we're feeling it right off the bat. They got a rumor. Hey, look, mm -hmm. you notice it says a strong delusion. Yeah. Okay, a strong delusion. It didn't say strong lies. It didn't say strong, uh, uh, many delusions. It's one. What's that? You're living it right now. You're in a lie. Yeah. You're living in a reality show where they don't tell you anything, and they're just going to use you as cattle. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, these pharmaceutical companies have been using everybody as cattle for years. I used to watch my grandfather. I used to get up every day. He had 16 pills. Plop. Yeah. On a spoon. He just kept putting them in, and I kept sitting there going, I don't understand if this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. And then I realized when he, when my grandfather died, and don't take this harshly, he looked like he was a Holocaust victim. I mean, he was like that, and he was just withered away. I actually picked him up, and it, and he, it felt like he was nothing when I picked him up. I'm glad he got saved. Amen. But uh, if, if this here right now, he says, uh, these things are going to come to pass. And when when is that going to come to pass? Well, we already have found it. It's in Revelation chapter 6. Go there. Revelation chapter 6. And where's it at? Uh, look down at verse number 8. After this uh, seal is opened up, the fourth seal, the, the, the fourth beast, he says, come and see. And verse number 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, famines, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And that's going to mean something as we come in. Uh, you'll notice it says in uh, verse number 3. Verse number 3. You know, it says, I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, 
and the dogs uh, to, to uh, tear, and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour uh, and destroy. Go to Genesis chapter 9. Something's going to happen here. Genesis chapter 9. In Genesis chapter 9, and uh, looking down at verse number, we'll start at the beginning. He says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now watch this. Verse number 2. And the fear of you, that's man, the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. And every what? Fowl of the air. So we got the fowls and we also got the beast right there. Upon all that moveth on the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea, uh, into your hand are they delivered. I don't know uh, if uh, anybody here has ever, see, ever seen a deer. And what happens, of course you've seen deer. You ever get close to one? Uh, and you ever go up, I mean, a wild deer and actually go up to it? And you can, but you know something, if you make a fast move, what happens? It's gone. Now, you've got to realize something. If that thing really wanted to go after you, it can. But you notice it doesn't. It runs away. We've seen big, big animals that just run away from man. Uh, God put a fear of, uh, of us on the animals. Well, just so you know, what he's trying to tell you in Jeremiah right here is that when the tribulation comes, the animals are going to lose their fear of man. They're going to be attacking people. You think Alfred Hitchcock, he probably got somebody. Somebody made a movie and knew about this. And that's why you see movies today. Once in a while you saw a movie come out where it wouldn't be today because they don't read the Bible. But years ago they had people that read the Bible. And guess what? They saw things like that and they said, man, let's make a movie about these birds attacking. Let's make a movie about animals attacking. And guess what? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. They're going to start attacking. Uh... He also says the sword's going to slay. You're going to have wars. Uh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have a dog's day uh, spiritually. You're going to have. Remember they say the dog's day. What's that? Not a good day. It's going to be not a good day. And he's bringing it up. And this dogs are like are scavengers, fowls and beasts of the earth. And this is going to be like an unusual event that's dangerous. Uh, verse number four in Jeremiah 15. And I will cause them. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth, the people. I'm going to cause them to be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. Why? Because of Manasseh. Does anybody remember that guy? He, he's the, he was the son of uh, who? Hezekiah. Yeah. And what did he do? Everything. Under the sun, he did everything. I mean, imagine he had a good father. His father, the, the Bible says that there wasn't a king in Judah like him. He, he was a, God liked Hezekiah. And, and Hezekiah uh, opened up the temple and started worshiping again. And, uh, and then Manasseh comes and he rules for a long time. And you know what Manasseh does? Everything. He's killing kids. He's putting kids in the fire. He's turning around and, and worshiping Baal. He's doing, uh, you name it, he did it. And he was one of the longest, reign, probably the longest reigning king. About 55 years of this. But guess what? Then all of a sudden he was put in prison. And then he got saved. And he came back out and he turned his life around. But you know what God said? What you did before, it's too much. It's just too much. You have to realize something. When you sin, uh, you might say, when you got saved, oh, wow, there's a lot of people to think, I'm free and clear and I'm free and clear. Yeah, no, the bills keep coming. Uh, you know, all those things that you, that you committed trespass on that you, in your flesh, you, you might still have to pay for that. You might still have to pay. Now, you don't have to, you're not going to go to hell for them, but you have to understand the world keeps moving. And you still owe payments. I mean, I, I, when I got saved, I, uh, I didn't hear them call up and say, hey, yeah, you know, we just cleared your mortgage. You don't have to pay anymore. Because, uh, you know, maybe you owed back payments or something uh, to it. And uh, I never heard them call up and say, hey, we're going to cancel that back payment on you. We forgave you. We heard about, we heard that God forgave you, so we're going to forgive you. Wouldn't that be weird? I would be like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Amen. But uh, this is what he tells you that is uh, 
coming and you're not going to be able to, to go past it. It's, it's, the clock's going to start ticking. Why? Because of Manasseh. One guy. One guy that moved the city. Hey, i got to tell you something. What do you think today? you got a guy that's just destroying your country. One guy who looks right, keeps writing orders. He's written orders and written orders. Country's being des destroyed right in front of our faces. Nothing we can do. You know what I tell you? We can do something. Turn off the TV. Who cares what he's saying? Just live life and not worry about it. Because guess what? You can't change it. You might as well just get a good relationship with the Lord now because you're going to need it. You know, uh, 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 people say to me, they say, I, I've talked to people and they, they turn around and they go, we ain't got much time left. What should I do? Oh, uh, well, do you think we have this much? Oh, I'm going to go to this and do this and do this. Are you kidding me? You're going to meet God in a couple of years. You better get ready. You better get real ready if you're going to meet him in a couple of years. Amen. And, uh, well, Let's go over, I'll show you something uh, that he did. Uh, go over to 2 Chronicles 33. Second Chronicles 33. Verse number one, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. Watch. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord like unto the abominations of the heathen. You know, he made, he's making them live just like the heathen, just like the church is today. What's happening? It's just like the world. And, and what does he say about it? He says, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And guess what he's going to do with them? He's going to cast them out for what just happened, for what's been happening. With Man what happened with Manasseh, you, you've still got a payment for it. Verse number, back to Jeremiah 15. You know, just, just, just looking at it. I mean, Jeremiah is seeing this, and we're seeing this. Jeremiah actually watched this all happen. The remnant had to watch it all happen. And, and there's a few of them that Jeremiah had, like Baruch, and others, they had to watch all this. And you know what? You're watching it today. It hurts. It really does. We, we got we to gotta understand something. When we grew up, I mean, going on vacation, we had a good time. It was, it was like, you know, baseball was down the road and everybody had a good time. And uh, it was America. And, and we, we loved it. We loved what we had back in the 70s. We loved what we had all the way up even in the 80s. And then it started starting to fall apart, you know, and you got to sit there and you go, I can't believe this is happening. Right. I mean, people that are old, old uh, uh, North, uh, old Korea, Korean war veterans are looking at it and just, just crying today at what's going on. It's like a morning time. And, and you know, the, you got you got a bunch of weirdos sitting there going, yeah, we're getting better. Uh, yeah, I got my hair green. That means we're getting better. Just a simple, well, we're, you know, we're getting more diversified. Yeah. Woo! Verse number five, he says this, For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? i got to ask you something. Hey, hey Larry, who had, who had pity on Jerusalem? No one. They even burned the place down, burned the temple, started flattening all of Jerusalem from that point on. What do you think is going to happen here? Same thing. He says, For who shall have pity upon, uh, upon thee, O Jerusalem? And who shall bemoan thee? And, and who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Nobody. They didn't do it for a long time. You know? Uh, thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore, I, I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. God's not turning back now. He's gone weary from, from repenting. Uh, these, these things happen whether you like them or not. That's, all, that's where it's coming down to. This is a cry. And he says, and I will fan them 
with a fan in, in the gates of the land, and I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people. Do you, you understand what he's saying here? I will destroy my people, he's saying. Since, why? Since they return not from their ways. And if you remember, something's John the Baptist said. He said the Lord has a what? He's got a fan in his hand. He's got a fan in his hand. It's almost time. He's going to cut that. He's going to cut down those trees. He's going to cut this thing down. Uh, you, you, you know, you think about it and you say, well, Christ died on the cross. How old was he? He was 33 and a half. He was cut in his prime. Now, I, I, about 1980s, maybe into the 90s, uh, if, if God would have, if the Lord would have come out, I, I, I probably in my heart would have said something like, well, I don't know, a 12 year old back then even. They don't really know much, but I got to tell you something. Today, they know everything. Yeah, you're not they know evil today, 12 years old. Yeah. I mean, they got a cell phone in their hand, and they can see everything in the world. And, man, they're, they're wicked kids today. Yeah. A lot of wickedness in the children today. Rapes. I never heard this stuff in school. Now, all of a sudden, like they're acting like it was always happening. No, it's not always happening. And guess what? What's really bad is the teachers are teaching them to do it. I never heard of a teacher putting on the things that they're doing, sex toys and everything else, and showing kids in school that are what? That are eight years old. Send your kids to public school. You've got to be kidding me. What are they going to learn? That kind of stuff? Wow, isn't that something? Uh, verse number uh, eight, that their widows are increased to me. Above the sand of the seas. I have put upon them against the mother of the young man a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. A loss of the fellowship of men. It's basically, look, you got to look the other way on that. It's, you know, there's no men around today. Look, uh, here we are this morning. This is, a, this is a great day in this church. I have the men today, right now, today. They are outnumbered. Now, we outnumber the women in here today. But let me tell you something. If you would have came this morning, we had over 20, we had over 20 people. And you know how many men we had? Me and Larry. <laughs> what is that? That's one-tenth. Where are the men? Uh, you know, uh, I, I got to give a, I got to say it like, I say it like this, and I, I, I got to tell you. Um, you know why men don't come to church anymore? Really? It's not just because it's nonsense or whatever. Men have a BS meter. They do. And when there's a guy up there talking, and he's, he's, he's just, he got nothing. It's dried up. Uh, there's no millennium. There is a millennium. You're reading the Bible, and you're saying, well, I know there's a seven-year tribulation. I know there's a millennium. I know these things. And there's a guy up there going, well, I don't know. I don't know. This is a gray area. That's over there is no good. Wait a second. He doesn't have anything he knows. Well, we'll baptize babies but because that lady over there likes it. She's a good tither. And you know what happens? The guys are looking at this going, and you know what guys do? I'm out of here. Community church. I'm out of here. It's confusion in the church today. It's confusion. You know what happens? Religion. And they start going just because, well, Larry went to church. I, I can tell you why Larry went to church. He's there every week. Even though the guy couldn't preach, he's there every week. You know why? Because better, no, better some church than no church. And he's going with, he's going because he's, it's, he knows what God wants, where God wants him. And God does want you in there. But it's a hard pill to swallow when the guy up there knows nothing of the Bible. And has the wrong Bible, and he still doesn't know it. He said to you, I, I use this Bible, why? It's easier to read. And yet he doesn't even know it. You know the problem with new versions are? They said that, that they were easier to read, but you know what they have now? They have two books on their shelf they're not reading. They didn't read the first one, now they don't read the second one. And now they got a whole congregation of confused people, and then sooner or later, he's got a place full of fake Christians. People don't even know they're saved. Walking around confused, because the preacher doesn't even know if he's saved. That's true. And they got guys who are saying, well, I've always been saved. Well, i got to tell you something. 
I've heard that on the streets. I was born a Catholic. Don't ever sing the blood, the blood angels. <laughs> he says, verse number nine, she that hath born seven languisheth. Uh -huh. she, she hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before the, their enemies, uh, saith the Lord. And here comes this more of a cry, and it, there's a withering, and there, there's a faith, and they're ashamed. And you know, and no, know what else is happening? Look at the confounded. What's that? They're blending in. They're just blending in with other worldly things because of these things. This is your church today. This is what's happening. What's that? It just doesn't have, it's confused. It doesn't know where to go. And it's looking to the world for answers. You know, in the Song of Solomon, what happens? The bride goes out to find the bridegroom. And you know what she starts asking? The people in the street. Hey, where do I go? Where's my, where's, where's, where's my beloved? Well, uh, well, if you don't know, how are we going to know? The world does not know the Lord. Why ask? That's like asking somebody how to get to Florida and they've never been there. I got to tell you, that's the way of the world, too. I mean, they, uh, imagine you were, you were born Catholic and you actually go to their church, which I don't know if any, why anybody would go. And the guy's standing up there and he has no idea how to get to heaven and you're sitting there listening to him, but you want to go. That's like asking somebody for directions that's never been there. And that's the way of the church today. Let's go watch the man in the dress. Maybe he knows. He's been wearing that dress a long time. Well, guess what? He doesn't know. That's why he's wearing a dress on Sunday morning. Verse number 10. Woe is me. Jeremiah's getting involved. He's hurting. He's hurting for Judah. He says, woe is me, my, my mother that has... Uh, born me a, a man of strife and a, and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent on usury nor men have lent to me on usury, yet every one of them doth curse me. God's, it, look, it's coming to the point where God's, God's people are even doing it. You're, 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 uh, here you are, you're going, you're learning about this book and stuff like that. And you know what God's people are saying? You actually read that one? Why are you reading that book? Oh, you know, there's a better one over here. And, and, and they just keep wanting you to do that. You know, uh, remember uh, Elijah when he was up on the hill? What did they say? Fifth, uh, come on down. Come down, oh man of God. Come down, oh man of God. This is the cry today. What's that come down? What's that come down to their level? That's what they would like you to do is come down to their level. The contentions are all over the place. Uh, you, you stay with the Lord and guess what? You will be singled out. Like it or not. You know, uh, well, you know, uh, I go down to this church. What do we learn? Well, we learn the Bible. Well, we just have a good time up here. You should say it's incredible. It makes me feel like this. It makes me feel like that. It makes me feel like, like this other thing. i got to tell you something. If your church is making you feel like something and feel and the feeling is all that, guess what? Get out of there. I've been in, uh, I've been in churches where you just... I've sat there and I just, nothing. The guy couldn't say anything that would even move anything because he had nothing behind it. You're not going to convict me by getting up there and playing Bozo the Clown stuff. You know, I need to hear God's word. He's the one that convicts. Uh, look, uh, if, you're not, if, if you're getting convicted here, that's great. Get it handled. But most of the time, what's going to happen with you is this word of God is going into you like anything else, like input, and guess what? It's going to come out, but it takes time to come out. You can't be just looking at one day, well, you know, I didn't, I went to church, tried it out, didn't like it, and you walk away. You say, you, you tell the people, you know, it's going to take you at least a few months you know, at least give it a few months of, uh, of being, uh, of listening and, and seeing how it works in your life. Now I ain't got time for that. Change the channel. And that's how life is. And we see it. And we've been involved in it. What's it called? It's called backsliding. We do that stuff, you know. It's not, and, 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 you know, a, a Christian that says he doesn't backslide is a liar. Right. And he's backslidden. Amen. Amen. But God's people are doing these things. Verse number 11 uh, says, 
The Lord said, verily, it shall be well with who? Everybody get a little... Uh, okay, look, look, look. Here's how you do it. You go like this. Whew. Why? Because that stuff above it, that really stunk. <laughs> I don't want to be in on it. Okay? And here we are, and we can say one thing. Uh, well, you know, at least, uh, at least we're... Whew. God's going to take care of us. I thought it was going to happen. He says, verily will I cause the enemy to entreat thee, what? Well. I'm going to have the enemy uh, to, to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Go to Jeremiah chapter 40. Jeremiah chapter 40, look down at verse number 4, and he says, And now, behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thine hand. If it seem good unto thee to come with me to Babylon, come, and I will look well unto thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, whither it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, there go, thither go. Now, while he was not yet gone back, he said, Go back also to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people, or go wheresoever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals, and a reward, and let him go. And here's who the man they did it to. Then went who? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. What's that? Jeremiah was Jeremiah was uh, was faithful to the Lord. You know what the Lord did? The Lord gave him in the end that remnant, and he's one of the only ones left. Grabbed a hold of him and took care of him. I've never seen God's people begging bread. Is what David said. Amen. Back in Jeremiah 15, he says in verse number 12. He says, shall iron break the northern iron and the steel? And that, I, I got to say, when I first read that, I went like this, huh? And I didn't understand it. First off, I had to look up when steel was, was made. I, I looked and I said, why is steel in there? When, uh, the, you know, I didn't think they had it yet, so I looked it up. They don't know when steel was actually invented. They only know when steel was mass produced because they have remnants of steel back 1800 BC. They, they knew how to heat it up. I don't understand any of this, any of that stuff. I got to tell you, I just looked it up. I looked it up in three different areas. It said the same date, about 1800 BC. They, they, they traced it back, and that's about as far as they've gotten back that there was steel back then in those days. Now, what we have here is the Iron Age, and the Iron Age started about, oh, about 500 BC, uh, in that uh, about no excuse me about six to seven hundred BC and and, it, and it's still today is the Iron Age. Now look how it says it. It says uh, shall iron break the northern. That's the key of this one. The northern judgment is still coming, and it says the northern here iron and uh, a steel. So uh, I had to I had to look it up, and I I noticed something in the Bible. Northern, okay. Babylon is north of Israel. Amen? He's north, he's north uh, east of it. Okay? And they came from the north and they took over. Then who conquers uh, Babylon? Persia. And they're north of Babylon. And then the next country who conquers, uh, who conquers Persia is Greece and they came from the north. And then Rome conquers Greece and they're from where? The north. And that's what he's talking about. I, I, I only got it this afternoon. I, I, I was like, wow, I, I get it now. He's saying, you know, that's where they're coming. And should these things, it goes further and further. And, and we see it. Verse number uh, 13 in that part, he says, the subst Thy substance and thy treasures will I give to, to the spoil without price. And that for all thy sins, even all thy borders. Uh, go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20.
And what had happened is Hezekiah had, had gotten, uh, he'd gotten some more years from the Lord here uh, altogether. Uh, uh, the clock, they turned the clock back and, and Hezekiah got a, a whole bunch of, what, 15 years from yeah. the Lord. And, uh, and so he, he went back to work basically and then look down and we'll start out in, um, we'll start out in, uh, I gotta go back and look, uh, verse number 14, 20, uh, 14. And the Bible says, then came Isaiah the prophet. This is after uh, uh, Hezekiah was in there and Babylon came down and they weren't the great place yet. Uh, and they came down to Hezekiah and it says, then came Isaiah, uh, the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come, that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And thy sons that shall uh, issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs, in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord, as long as I'm going to be okay, I don't worry about anybody else. Isn't that what he just said to him, really? Mm -hmm. Amen. What a harsh statement to say, isn't it? Uh, really, what should have happened is Hezekiah should have dropped to the ground and cried and asked God for forgiveness and begged and begged and begged and maybe God, uh, maybe God would repent that thought. He had to brag about it. Yeah, he, but he had to brag. And, and, and that's, look back at uh, uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 15 and verse 13. He says, Thy substance, thy treasures, will I give to the spoil without price, and that for all thy sins, even in all thy borders. Verse 14, And I, I will make thee to pass with thine enemies into the land which thou knowest not, for a fire is kindled in mine anger which shall burn upon thee. And uh, Jeremiah sees, sees uh, he starts to talk about this, and he starts to, Jeremiah, I can imagine Jeremiah going, oh man, I remember that. I remember what Hezekiah, what happened with Hezekiah. Even though Josiah came in and he says, I, I, I just, ooh, it's something that I, I have to uh, remember. And he says, that all that stuff's going away. And now God's going to promise him and give him a more comfort to the end here and he says oh lord thou knowest thou knowest remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors take me not away in thy long suffering know that for thy sake i have suffered rebuke and jeremiah had that type of ministry and, and you got to realize something you although you're not getting rebuked daily in here you're actually in that type of ministry today we're telling people about it i mean uh, you're telling people hey why don't you come down to our church i know your church is I, I i've been there uh you know you need to come down here we need to learn the bible and what do they say i'm good i'm good you, you know, that's what they'll tell you. I'm okay over. I've been in this church 20 years. I'm going to stay in this church. I mean, if you're not, get, if you're not getting anything from it, it's not the same church. I mean, do you want to learn the Bible? you want to learn about God? Or do you want to learn about how to set up a church? Hey, you want to learn how to set up? I have lessons over here. I'll teach you how to carry the offering plate like, the, like they do in the Protestant churches. And you get a big cookie from that. Or we'll get a guy up here just to read a few passages, and I'll just come up and give you the old, Hi, everything's going to be good. That's what we're hearing today. <laughs> Verse 16, thy words were found. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Here's a good, here's a good one. And thy word was unto me the joy of and the rejoicing of my heart. Why is that? For I am called by thy name, O Lord of hosts. 
And, and he equates the words with God. And, and you know, there was a time in 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings chapter 22. Jeremiah, uh, he remembers something that happened. In 2 Kings uh, 22, what, it, what was going on was uh, the, the, the king before uh, Josiah, um, the reign of Ammon, and also when Manasseh was there until his end time. And then it, Ammon came in. You know what he did? He closed the temple up. And he broke, basically boarded it up. And nobody was using the temple anymore. It became, it became a distress in, the, in, in Israel, in Judah. And, and guess what? And, and then finally Josiah comes in. When he's eight years old, he begins to reign. And you know what? He, he opens up when he realizes he opens up the temple. And, and then he, he, wants to, uh, he wants to be with, be, uh, be with, he wants to know God. And what happens? Look at verse number 8, 22, 8. It says, and Hilkiah, uh, the high priest, one of the sons of Zadok, and Hilkiah, the high priest said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan, the scribe, came to the king, that's Josiah, and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house of the Lord and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work and have the oversight over the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king, and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. And you know what he said? He said, woe is us, man. We got problems. And you know what God said? That's the heart of a king that I want to see. And he had a good reign, and then after him it all went away. Right after him. Josiah is the last good king. Hey, just so you know, you better. You had a Josiah moment. It was just about a few years ago. You had for four years. You had a good man. He, he, I, he was unsaved. And, and yes, he, he was immoral. But you know, he, he tried his best. He tried his best. And we had a Josiah mo, mo, uh, moment. And, and you got to remember, we were actually all happy for about four years yeah. when he got in. Not to mention, man, he was hilarious. I got to tell you, I liked watching him more than I liked anything, but especially the debates. I still watch them and laugh. They're, they're great. <laughs> Amen. But he says, thy words were found. Thy words were found. And, and there's a cry, cry for help now. He says, verse number 17, I sat not in the assembly of, of the mockers. I didn't hang with them. He says, nor rejoice. I sat alone because of thy hand, Lord. For thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as the waters that fail? And, and, and I got to tell you something, you're saying that today. Yeah. That's you today. Where, what happened? I remember as a kid, I remember these things. I actually love these things. I don't want the flag to hit the ground. I, I, I fought for that. Uh, you know, and now all of a sudden, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I see the banners just going down and burning. Riots in the cities. Nobody likes each other. Nobody can have a good conversation anymore. There's always always some, some somebody that's got to have that face today. Like they're going to save the world or something, and we're the problem with it. And then in the last part, he gives them, he ends them, ends this chapter. And these are preachings. I guess there's like a, in, 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 in up to chapter four, there's so many preachings. And he says, "Therefore, thus saith the Lord: If thou return, then will I bring thee again." And thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth uh, the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. 
And that's the problem today is that he puts that last part in. What's that? I want you to come unto me. God says, I want you to come unto me. And you know what we know what, know what his people do? They go to everywhere else. Like I said, people are trying to find answers where? At the wrong place. There's a place to find answers, and they're all going to the wrong place. Uh, they finally, they think one church is the same as the other. I don't know how many times I've, I've led somebody to Christ. I said, well, you need a church. Here, here's a good church to go to. I go see them later, and they say, yeah, I went to church. I said, where'd you go? Well, I went down to that Assembly of God church, and, and they told me now I got the Holy Ghost after about a month because they put me in water. Whenever you see a guy that has Acts 2 or Acts 2.38, that's how they got saved, guess what? He's a fraud. Acts 2.38 is not a salvation call. Acts 2.38 is a call of somebody who wants to serve God and be separate from others, and he wants sanctification. That's why they dunked them in the water. Those people that John... Uh, was preaching to are now being preached to by Peter in Acts chapter 2 and they just got through they knew about John and they sure knew about what Jesus done because it was only a few months ago people don't realize that they read the Bible like it's new each chapter's new no it's a continual story amen amen but he says here he said if thou take forth the precious uh, from the vial you know what that precious is what you got in your hand and you got to get that from the vial. What's the vial? Those other versions. They're vile. Read them for a while. Shows Jesus, I guess, the, NA, the new American satanic version that has Jesus as a liar in, in John chapter 7. you got other books that just take the blood right out of the book and like it's, like, like it's not even, shouldn't even be there. And how'd you get saved? By the blood of Jesus Christ, the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. You can't be forgiven without the shedding of blood. And they took it out of the book, so how are you going to get it? Mm -hmm. Then you got another guy down the road. He just wants to shove it down your throat and tell you you're getting Jesus. He's gotten sick. Verse number 20 says, And I, I will make thee unto, unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Why is that? For I with thee. To save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. And God gives a last promise. And i got to tell you something. Those last promises I've been holding to for a long time. What's that? God's going to deliver me. I'm going to be delivered. Whether I die or whether I go up in the air, somewhere along, I'm going to be delivered. And that's his promise to me. So what do I do in the middle? I'm getting prepared to meet him. That's what I'm doing right now, just getting prepared to meet him. And I'm trying to look at my grandkids, and I'm saying, you know, I want them, if this keeps going, I want them to meet the Lord as soon as they can. I want them all saved. You know, if I can get them in here, I'll get them in here. I'll just talk. And all I do all day with my, with my granddaughter, I just talk about Jesus to her. I do. I sit there and I'm like, Jesus, I'm like, I'm like, the greatest name in the world is Jesus. The greatest name in the world is Jesus. Yeah, you need to get saved someday. And guess what? You're going to have to go to Jesus. And, I, and, and then I sing, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I try to direct her all the time. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Amen. Amen. She's gonna, she, knows, she actually knows. I tell her, where's the truth? And she goes, the Bible. She does. She goes to the Bible. And I go, thank you. Amen. And, uh, and she knows the song, and we sing in the house. And you know what she does? She sings with us. She sings with us. I've been, I, I'll tell you what, I've been, I've been having a great time just bringing her to church. She's been up at Cross Seat. She's been here. And uh, she asks us to go to church right now. When her sister gets older, we'll try and get her, uh, her going too. And, and hopefully with my... Uh, the bug daughter over in Vermont and get her baby in the church and everything else. And what's, uh, hey, look, man, I want us all going up. I want all your family going up. I want everybody going up. I just don't want anybody left behind. Nobody left behind. I know it's going to happen, but guess what? I don't want it. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the message. I thank you, Lord. You're, you've been, you were kind to us in that message because that's a tough message, Lord Father. You just can't get that just, uh, just, 
just trying to think on things, Lord. I thank you for being uh, for being uh, one of the, being constant, Lord, and and being faithful to us with these promises, Lord Father. Let us look towards Thee, Lord God, that Thou wilt save us in time of trouble. We thank you, Lord, for all you do, and let us go home in peace. And we'll see. We'll be back again, Lord, as as faithful servants. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hoorah. It's good to see you, Kevin. <laughs>